Of visits and connections with my daughter, okay. But I'm going to tell you one that was pretty, pretty uh, hard to discount, okay. And it's the story of my daughter's um, moon called Isla's moon. So here I have to see my. I go to a party. <laughs> it's a Tupperware party, jewelry party, and I see my daughter's best friend's mother, and she's standing on the other side of the room, and she's like dreading seeing me, right? She's you know those people, right? <laughs> those people who don't have any idea what the hell to say to you or how to say it, and it's their shit, right? So sorry, I swear. It's their shit, right? So you see her, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to go over there and make this right for her. Okay, so I find my way over to her. Have you ever been in this situation? Okay. <laughs> I'm coming, you know. I get close to her, and I go, how are you? Oh, good. I go, you know, it's okay. I'm okay. I want you to know I'm okay. You know, I'm getting through. It's hard. It sucks. How's Alyssa? She said, I go, you know, God, you're kind of looking at me weird, right? And she goes, because she was. <laughs> she goes, I'm kind of freaked out that I'm seeing you. And I go, why? She goes, well, I was just getting into the car, and my daughter came running out to the car, and she said, don't leave. And the woman said, I, I'm going to go. I'm at a jewelry party, a Tupperware party. I'm on my way. I'm late. And she said, just give me a second. I just wrote a poem, and you've got to hear it, Mommy. OK? And the mother was like, I can't. She went into a temper tantrum. So the mother took the second to be late and listen to the poem, and here it is. If you were up, oh, I can't tell you yet. Sorry. I just got stopped. OK. So the woman looks at me, and she says, can I email you the poem tomorrow? It's just that simple. OK. I go, sure. Great idea. Party goes on. Got to work the next day. Pull up my email, and there it is, the poem. OK back to my place. If you are up at half past nine, when the moon is up in the starlit sky, you will know why the moon is there to shine a bright glittery trail to a place where happiness is all there is, no wars, no guns, no need to fight. That's the place I'll be tonight. So when I saw this, there's my daughter, by the way. You feel that? OK. I went, oh my god. It's the moon. So now I have to tell you the moon story, OK? My daughter was conceived underneath the full moon. And she knew this. And I knew this, OK? And so she would look at the moon. She'd go, tell me the moon story, Mom. Oh, I love God. The day you were going to, the day we decided to have you, that's the day, you know? We prayed that night, and you came, and all oh, the moon, OK? She happened to be buried underneath the full moon. So, Beautiful, beautiful poem, but you know, for me, <laughs> okay? But not really when I finish telling you the rest of the story. So I see it, I go, well, I can't stop there. <laughs> People don't stop there, okay? I got on the internet, I'm like, when's the next full moon? August 9th. Exactly 10 years earlier, the day she was conceived. That moon. So I mark it in my calendar, and life goes on. Three, four weeks later, I'm driving down the road, and it hits me. August 9th, cool beans. So I text my boyfriend, look outside. It's got to be out there. Isla's moon, OK? I come around the corner in the interstate in, Will in Milton, excuse me, and there is the most magnificent moon I have ever seen in my life. It had a huge halo <laughs> around the outside of it. It was on national news, OK? Because the northern light somehow affected its sphere, nor I don't know. I can't tell you. It was, my, it was amazing. So I pulled off the side of the road, called my girlfriend real quick, who's a photographer, and said, get the hell outside and take a picture of that moon. And I'll explain it all when I get home. So she did. I sat there, and this is what I said. And I hope you say this when you have those connections, because they love attention. OK. Thank you, sweetie. I see. I know. I love it. I got it. I appreciate it. I'm happy to. I'll never forget. Thank you. And we pulled back on the road. We. <laughs> OK. Isn't that interesting? I just said we. And I drove home. When I got home, I called my girlfriend. And I said, hey, sorry about that. But did you get the picture? She says, do me a favor. 
Will you look at the time you called? It was 9.30, okay? So, if you are up at half past nine, when the moon is up in the starlit sky, you will know why the moon is there. She knew, I knew. This is a really important story, people. To shine a bright glittery trail, what eight-year-old writes that? <laughs> glittery trail. To a place where happiness is all there is, no wars, no guns, no need to fight, that's the place I'd be tonight. I'll be tonight. Now here's what's so amazing about this. Please don't see Isla's moon as my moon and discount it for yourself. Karen McFeeders wrote this story and wrote this song for me, and you can get this song, and I want you to see that moon as your moon. This is my daughter's message. And everything in changing and transition with the moon, right? One thing we know about transition is that it's forever changing. So how is it that this little girl could tell me a month earlier, channel a poem, and she's a channeler, I'm working with her right now, she's amazing. How could she tell me this and then what, time? Like, you know, we're caught up in the linear thing here, right? We understand time. How many years has it been since your grief? Zero to six months, five or two people. That's, that's our shit again, <laughs> okay? For them, it's just all the same. And they let us know in this metaphor. Are you okay with me saying that? Okay. Does that bring comfort to anybody? Okay, I hope so. I last moved, was conceived On a night in early August Loving in the breeze One bright light Too soon dimmed A band of angels playing A saint goes marching in don't exist there's perfect peace swing low sweet child and touch the stars there are memories in 